What's up, everybody? It's Digital Charcuterie. It's Casual Friday, and it's Andrew Fantasia. And by it's, I mean the guy on the other side of this thumb. Welcome aboard. Uh, today, our topics include Two-Face and everything everywhere gets delayed. And if you think this video is all right, don't you delay. Uh, just go ahead and click that like button and the subscribe button right now if you haven't already, and the bell too, and all the little comment stuff. And if you're looking or something to read this summer. Maybe you're a fantasy fan and you know what? You're like, hey, I've read Lord of the Rings a million times already. Brandon Sanderson's next novel is not out yet. What am I gonna read in my spare time? I'll tell you exactly what you can read in your spare time, my friend. You can read We Were Wizards, which is a fantasy novel that I wrote. I've been working on this for many years. It is the first in a fantasy saga that I have been putting together. Uh, it's my pride and joy, my baby. We Were Wizards, this is book one. You can get it on Amazon right now in ebook and paperback as well as hardcover. And if you like it, the next book in the series is already available to purchase. You can get Ghosts of Wizards Past and Seekers of the Stones, whoops, there we go, other way around, right now on Amazon. So check those out. But it's Casual Friday today, so we are going to be talking about anything and everything. Uh, and the main two things we're talking about involve delays for days. So the news came out this week mostly due to the writer's strike. Um, and you know what? I don't like saying that. I don't like saying due to the writer's strike because that sounds like it's putting blame on the writers and it shouldn't. It should be putting blame on the greedy a-holes who are not paying the writers what they're due. So due to the awful people who made the writer's strike necessary in the first place, all of this wonderful, juicy, good entertainment that we have been looking forward to is going to be delayed even further than it already has been. So the wait already for Avengers Kang Dynasty has been excruciating for at least me. Now it's going to get one year more excruciating because, yeah, on top of Avengers Kang Dynasty, pretty much every MCU Phase 5 movie on their slate is getting delayed with the exception, I think, of Daredevil 3, which for some reason... Maybe it's because they're already in the midst of filming and it's pretty much past the phase where writing matters. Maybe that's why, but for whatever reason, it's coming out and we are getting Captain America 5 in less than a year, fingers crossed. But everything, you know, Blade, Fantastic Four, Avengers King Dynasty, Avengers Secret Wars, Thunderbolts, they are all getting delayed. And to quote Michelangelo, major bummer. And that's not even all. We're getting delays on the Avatar sequels. Avatar 3 is supposed to come out next year. It's not coming out next year. Now it's coming out in 2024, five. That's another year ahead of next year. And then we have to wait four years till 2029 when Avatar 4 comes out. And then another two years till 2031 when Avatar 5 comes out, which is just ridiculous at this point. The fact that we know what movie is gonna come out in 2031 blows my mind. Everything, it just, it feels like delays have become so normal. And I don't know how we let it get to this point because lots of things get delayed. Lots of entertainment, video games, films, they they get delayed. It happens. I'm not saying that all of a sudden it's just become a thing. It, it, it happens. But lately, since the pandemic, which obviously, you know, we have to put blame where blame is due. The pandemic made it hard for a lot of people to work. That's totally understandable. But it feels like the delays have just been coming more fast and furious than they ever have, including delaying fast and furious movies. So there you go. Everything is being delayed. Everything under the sun. If you were looking forward to dinner tonight, guess what? Dinner's delayed. If you were looking forward to your wedding day, guess what? Your wedding day has been delayed. In fact, just in breaking news, you have been delayed. You are delayed right now. You are not going to be ready until way after you said you'd be ready. And when I say ready, I mean ready for whatever the hell you want. Delays everywhere. In fact, our next topic that has nothing to do with delays is going to be delayed until a few more minutes from now. I'm just gonna, I wanna be like the cool kids and delay stuff. I'm, I'm just gonna sit here, I'm gonna waste everybody's time. You were waiting for the second uh, second thing. You saw two faces all over the thumbnail. You know we're gonna talk about two face, but I'm gonna delay it. I'm gonna delay it a few minutes. Cause it's cool, it's what Hollywood wants now. Here we go. And on top of all these 
delays at that. There's more, there's more to this story. Uh, on top of all these things being delayed, we are also getting delay, well, not announced delays, but it's fairly certain, like 95% certain that we are going to be seeing delays on films such as Beyond the Spider-Verse and um, Fast 11, I believe. Again, maybe if you just pay your writer studios, these sorts of things won't be happening. And it makes me sad. I talked about this on Super Tuesday with James, and you can watch that video uh, here on the channel. It's already up. But it makes me sad that when the studios announce these delays, particularly Disney, because these are mostly under the Disney umbrella, what we're talking about here, it made me sad that they set out all these dates and just showed the dates and shoved the dates in our face um, instead of, you know, just taking responsibility and having the integrity to say, you know what? This is on us because we were greedy and we didn't pay our writers what they deserve. This is why all these wonderful things you were waiting for and excited for, you're not going to get to see them for another year now. It's They completely glossed over the fact that they are to blame. And that really upset me. It did. It was really a bummer to hear that. It was more of a bummer than the actual delays themselves because they're, you know, it's just somebody... It's like that meme where the guy shoots the guy behind him and then turns around and says, how did this happen, right? Boom, oh, look, he's dead. Isn't that awful? It's so awful that he's dead, right? Come, give me give me some money. That's exactly what it sounded like. So uh, I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased with the studios right now, with any of them. Let me know in the comments. Let us know uh, how you feel about these delays, which ones uh, are the most disappointing for you? Were you really looking forward to Kane Dynasty like me and now you have to wait another year, right? Was it that? Was it uh, the Avatar sequels too? Because I was chomping at the bit to get into some more Pandora action. What was the delay that kind of cut you the most? And on top of those delays, there were other news tidbits that they sprinkled on top that had to do with Star Wars of all things. Because to coat this sandwich of bitterness with a little bit of sugar and to further bury the fact that it is their own damn greedy fault that these delays are happening at all, they tried to shove some Star Wars release dates in our face, including from the looks of things, I, it, it's been a minute since I looked at the full report, so forgive me if I'm quoting this incorrectly, but a movie in 2025, two movies in 2026, and then another movie in 2027. I don't love this for many reasons. Um, first of all, it's creating the same mistake again that we went through, which was having these annual movies turned out to be a bad idea because it lost the sense of an event film. Even Kathleen Kennedy said she likes the eventization of these movies the same way that James Bond movies are events. So it really kind of sours that. And I was looking forward to Star Wars being an event again. Of course, lots of Star Wars is never a bad thing, but this is still not as good a thing as it would have been if we could have spread them out a little bit more. And on top of that, the other reason why this is not something I love is because, let's face it, guys, we have no idea what these movies are. And there is a very extremely highly probable chance that these four movies will stop existing at some point before they come out, right? That's just, that's the world we live in now. And I hate to be such a downer because we're not one of those channels. Digital charcuterie is all about just the fun and positivity and the sheer glee and the delight that comes with just being a fan of pop culture because that's what we are, right? I love it. I love that I'm fortunate enough to live in a world where I can wake up and have food on the table and then watch a Star War and sell my beautiful, sexy purple book. And, you know, I couldn't be happier with uh, the life I've been given. And, and I'm, I'm grateful and happy for that. And I love being a fan of all these things. So I don't want to be one of the YouTube sourpusses. That's not what you come here for. That's not what I come here for. Uh, if you want somebody to just sit there and complain with and just be miserable with the critical drinker is a couple of clicks away. Okay. But the, the fact of the matter is that it's very hard to get excited and hyped, 
particularly for Star Wars movies now, because we've just been burned too many times. Um, we're, we are a broken record at this point, because I've said this so many times here and on Rebel Scum Podcast as well. But getting excited for their movies, that's a privilege that Disney and Lucasfilm lost when they canceled like their eighth movie in a row, right? So as happy as it made me to hear that news at Star Wars Celebration 2023 when they talked about a Rey movie and an old Ancient Republic movie and a Mandalorian verse movie, as happy as that made me and as giddy as a schoolboy I will be to see those in theaters, I got to rein everything in until the day that drops in a theater. That's it. Like, I can't. I cannot make myself get invested anymore because it's it's too much of a roller coaster, man. You wouldn't date somebody who emotionally abuses you and, and gives you mixed signals. So it's the same thing here. I, I got to step away, not from Star Wars, because Star Wars is in my heart and I will love it till the day I die, but I got to step away from Star Wars hype, from Star Wars movie hype. Even Star Wars video game hype, because as great as Outlaws looked, let's face it, it's going to get delayed eight times if it ever comes out at all. We'll see Outlaws in like 2028 at the earliest. So Star Wars hype is just something that I cannot have in my life anymore, uh, at least not until they start delivering on the promises they keep making. So I don't want to be that guy, and I'm not going to be that guy. That's as negative as we're getting today, I promise. Delay over on the Two-Face stuff. Let's move on. We have a fan email here from Alessandro Di Battista. Hello, Alessandro. Thank you for writing in. Thank you so much. Alessandro, you asked us, do you think Two-Face will be in the James Gunn DCEU? And therefore, could there be three different Two-Faces in theaters with Joker 2, The Batman 2, and James Gunn's DCU? All right. I like this question. Thank you so much for the question. Two-Face. I think the possibility of having multiple Two-Faces, the possibility of having multiple of any DC character is going to get much higher in the coming years because we have not, and when I say we, I mean the royal com postmodern comic book movie world, we have not played with that yet. It's, it's a thing that we have not played with in the superhero genre, and it could be a total disaster. The closest we've ever come to playing with it is the Spider-Verse movies. And what I mean by that is, sure, The Flash has the modern uh, Bruce Wayne played by Ben Affleck, right? We got the Batfleck, and it's also throwing in Michael Keaton Batman, but those are still both callback to Batman's yore, right? Batman's is not grammatically correct, but you know what I mean? They're callbacks to Batman yore, uh, but we have not yet had the situation where, you know, Jonathan Majors is playing, this is a horrible example, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that because Kang is a weird character to do this with, but here's a different example. We have not lived in the world yet where, for example, we would have um, Catherine Newton playing stature in Quantumania, but also there's a totally different Elseworlds story about the Young Avengers, and in that one, she's played by Millie Bobby Brown, right? And they're running concurrently, and then maybe they meet. We have not lived in that world yet in the world of superhero movies. Again, Spider-Verse is the closest thing because Miles Morales, uh, the Shamik Moore version of Miles Morales from those movies, he's not meeting other Miles's or other Spider-Men yet. Uh, he hasn't met Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield, right? Uh, and again, that would be like a Flash situation of going back, but he, he's, he's just sort of interacting with his own universe. We haven't had that happen yet, like Alessandro is mentioning, where we have the universes are all happening together, right? The, the multiverse characters that are coming in wouldn't be nostalgia at that point. They would be just people from other franchises. They'd be true crossovers. So the idea of having a James Gunn Two-Face, a Matt Reeves Two-Face, and a Todd Phillips Two-Face, very interesting. Uh, and they would be three very different Two-Faces. And 
I have a feeling the Todd Phillips one would probably not cross over because such is the nature of the Todd Phillips universe. It's very adult and stands on its own. And if ever the two should meet, it would be less of a peanut butter chocolate situation and more of an oil water situation, I think. So I don't know if I would want, you know, I don't want Jared Leto with his tattoos running around chewing scenery and then Joaquin Phoenix is there trying to play it seriously, right? That those don't jive too well. I don't know, maybe it would be hilarious, right? What do I know? But the thought of a Two-Face being portrayed differently in two different or three different cinematic storylines color me excited uh, because with the nature of Two-Face himself, there's Two-Face and there's Harvey Dent. So really, instead of three characters, you're kind of getting six. You're getting three different Harvey Dents and three different Two-Faces. And we know that the Aaron Eckhart version from The Dark Knight was completely, you know, football fields different than the Tommy Lee Jones version from Batman Forever. Uh, and had Billy D. Williams gotten the chance, oh, have, if, if he had only gotten the chance to play Two-Face, I'm sure that would have been a very different kind of Two-Face as well. So the thought of James Gunn throwing in a character like Two-Face and having him maybe one day interacting with a Matt Reeves Two-Face could be very exciting. But it's not the interactions that make me excited as much as it is just the idea of getting to see the different versions of these characters. Getting to see what Two-Face would be like in the Matt Reeves world versus what he would be like in the Todd Phillips world, right? Uh, the Todd Phillips world, Two-Face is a corporate guy and Todd Phillips' world is set in the 80s, and the corporate sort of Reagan-era America of the 80s was a lifestyle choice. It was a big deal. It was everywhere. So you could really play that up in Todd Phillips, whereas Matt Reeves has a much more film noir timelessness that has got them. So you would play that down, and you would have a Two-Face who's more kind of pulled out of an old serial or a, a detective story, you know, just an old Humphrey Bogart movie. And just the possibilities are endless because these characters can be interpreted so many different ways. So that makes me more excited than crossovers, 100%. Even the crossovers are fun too. Uh, just seeing what those kinds of people could be like. What's Catwoman like in um, the Todd Phillips universe? What is an 80s Catwoman uh, going to be like? What is? We don't know what James Gunn's DC universe is going to look like, so it's hard to kind of take any character and try to quantify them within those parameters. But that's a thing that we'll get to do as well. So very exciting thought, Alessandro, and I kind of hope it comes true because I didn't care for the Tommy Lee Jones Two-Face at all, and I thought the Aaron Eckhart Two-Face was very underused, like almost to the point of being in the same league as the Spider-Man 3 Venom in terms of how underused they were. Uh, so it'll be nice to see a cinematic Two-Face that really gets his due or his two. I'm gonna close on that joke because there's, you know, it's only downhill from here. Thank you so much for watching Casual Friday, everybody. My name is Andrew Fantasia. I won't be on the show next week because I will be out of town. Uh, I'll be in New York City, living it up, looking at things in New York that we don't have here, which is pretty much everything. Uh, until next time though, until the next time I see you, may you all be the masters of your own universe.